Several months ago, Elegoo sent me one of their Saturn 3D printers, and yes, they did personalize it for me, which was pretty awesome. Since then, I've used it for several projects on the channel, so I think I have a pretty good idea of what it's like to use, especially when it's pushed to its limits. In this long-term review, I'm going to go over the pros and cons of the Saturn compared with cheaper printers like the Elegoo Mars or longer Orange 30, and also talk about some of the issues that I ran into while using the printer. The Saturn is an MSLA printer. This kind of printer uses UV-sensitive resin in a vat with transparent film on the bottom, and an LCD that selectively masks off some of the UV light being emitted from below. After putting resin in the vat, you use the touchscreen to select a model that you've already sliced on your computer and saved to a USB memory stick. When you start printing, the build platform will be lowered into the vat of resin, and the model will be built up one extremely thin layer at a time by selectively exposing the resin to UV light. Since the Saturn uses a monochrome LCD screen, it prints significantly faster than older printers, but a model like this that maxes out the entire build platform can still take 10 hours or more to print. At this point, you still have to remove the support materials, clean the model in alcohol, and cure the entire model with UV light or sunlight to completely harden it. One minor difference between the Saturn and my other resin 3D printers is that it has the USB port on the side. That's where you plug in your memory stick. That's better than it being on the back as it is on some of my other printers, but I'd rather have it be on the front because this way you can't put multiple printers side by side. If we look on the back, you can see it's got an Ethernet jack, which to be honest, I have never used and never planned to use, an off-on switch, and a power connector for the external power brick. You can also see that there are two fans here on the back, which might make you think that it's loud in operation, but it's actually quieter than my other printers. One other minor improvement I noticed is that if you look at the bottom of the vat, there are bolts on each corner here that stick out and sort of form metal feet for the vat, and they fit into little holes in the uh, base of the machine that allows you to easily slot it into place. And when you put it down on a flat surface, the bottom of the FEP film is not actually rubbing up against anything, which is nice. But I think the main draw for this printer is that it can print pretty large models. So I wanted to do a couple of things to sort of show you the difference in size between the Saturn and the Mars or the Mars True Pro, which are the other Elegoo printers that I have, but it also would apply to something like the uh, the longer Orange 30, for example, kind of the more entry-level printers. If we take the resin vat out here, you can see it is quite large, but you may not be able to tell unless I compare it with something. So this is an unused replacement vat from a Mars printer. And if I hold it up like that, you can see there's a gigantic difference in the capacity here. I'm not sure offhand how much resin this actually can take, but it seems to me pretty clear that it's a lot more <laughs> than the Mars. I think I made this comparison when I was reviewing the Mars 2 Pro, but you can see that the original Mars here on the right and the Mars 2 Pro have somewhat different sized build platforms, but it's really not that big of a difference. You've got a little bit of <laughs> extra room there, and actually it's been surprisingly convenient to have that extra room. Sometimes it's made the difference between being able to fit a model and not. So I have definitely uh, enjoyed having the extra space here on the Mars 2 Pro. But if we are to compare this build plate with that of the Saturn, I think you'll see... Let's see, we'll put it right on top there. Look how gigantic the difference is there. <laughs> that is very impressive and I really think this is going to open up some new possibilities for things that I can print or for, uh, you know, printing multiple things at once, things like that. And indeed, it has been very convenient to be able to print very large objects at once without having to cut them up into different pieces or anything like that. This is the piece I showed you earlier, the section of Max Rebo's organ, and there's just no way you could do this very well on a smaller printer like the regular Elegoo Mars. You would have to do it in many pieces and there's a good chance that they wouldn't fit together properly. To give you an idea what these look like when they're finished, this is my finished Max Rebo band, which I printed entirely on the uh, Elegoo Saturn. And all of these just came out really well, I think. 
Uh, you can also, of course, use the Saturn to print lots of smaller things at once. I do this less often because my smaller printers can, of course, do this more or less as well, just not as many items. But if you're a war gamer or you like to print miniatures, this can be really useful and you can print up a lot of things in a short amount of time. Here's the finished figures that I made from those parts. It's the frog lady and her husband from the Mandalorian TV show. More recently, I printed up this uh, skeletal Jabba that I'm calling the visible Jabba. And although it wouldn't fit the entire figure on at once, I did have to cut off the tail. It did print out really well and yielded a finished figure like this. So I'm really happy with what I've been able to accomplish with this printer, but that doesn't mean that I haven't had some problems. One of them is simply, I think, a factor of it being so much larger than the printers that I've used in the past, and that's if you have a problem, if you have a failure, it is really quite frustrating because you might use up a half a bottle of resin, which costs maybe $20 in materials if you have a large failure. I also found I ran into more problems with Cheetubox, the slicing software, when I was using very large models. Sometimes it would take a long time to slice, or I would encounter errors, things of that nature, and I think it's just because larger models take up more memory, but it is something to consider. But by far the biggest and most frustrating problem I had was after I had been using the machine for a couple of months, it just started not printing reliably, and for a long time I couldn't figure out what the issue was, and even after contacting Elegoo and going through some troubleshooting with them, they couldn't figure it out either. One thing that can be kind of frustrating when using these machines is that there are a lot of potential variables. It might be something that you've done wrong in the settings, or it might be your resin, or it might even be the temperature of the room, theoretically. But in this case, it turned out to be the FEP film on the bottom of the vat that had gotten damaged. And you can sort of see the effects of that here. It wasn't always this obvious, but it was clear that it was causing the supports to fail in many cases, and just causing the printer to not print properly. One reason I didn't immediately replace the FEP film was that I couldn't find any. They didn't actually have any replacements available for quite a while. And also, I've never had to replace a FEP film this early on into my ownership of a printer. In fact, I barely have to do it at all with my other printers unless I've punctured it with a metal scraping tool or something like that. Here is what the film looked like. You can see it's actually pretty scuffed up in places. And my working hypothesis is that I accidentally damaged the metal build plate when I was trying to remove a particularly stubborn print, and that damaged the FEP film. So I replaced the build plate, which you can buy separately, luckily, and they're not that expensive. And now I'm going to replace this film by removing all these bolts all around the edge here with an Allen wrench. As I said, I was unable to find the replacement FEP films uh, for quite a while, which is one reason why I didn't try and replace it, but the other one is just that this is a big pain, and I was really hoping that it wasn't the FEP that needed replacing, but I, I probably should have just bitten the bullet and done it earlier. What it involves is, as I said, undoing all of those bolts all around the edge, and once you're done with that, you have to sort of remove the top part of the vat, but you're not done yet. There's still more bolts for you to remove on this second section here of the frame. There's 24 on this part. These are holding together two thin metal frames that kind of sandwich the film in between them. So you have to undo all of those all the way around here. One reason I'm showing you this is that you will have to remove and replace this film at some point in your ownership of the printer. And also, to be honest, it was a frustrating thing for me to experience because I didn't know what was causing all of these failures until I finally figured out that it was the film. So once you've got all of the bolts removed, you can just take out the film here and replace it with a new one, removing the protective film from both the top and the bottom of the FEP film, and then just sandwiching it between these two metal frames. Now you do have to use the uh, Allen wrench or something to kind of poke holes in the film where the holes for the bolts are, or else you can't really manage to get the bolts in there. After replacing the film, I haven't had any other weird failures like that, so I'm glad I was able to finally solve this issue. Ultimately, I think this was my own fault that I had this problem in the first place, but I thought I should point it out. In terms of quality, I've been very happy overall. There has been one small issue, which you can see on this print here. There's a 
small line that goes across one section of it and you can also see it on this java print right there on the skull apparently there is a firmware update of some kind that can get rid of this i haven't actually looked into it yet but it's not exactly a deal breaker for me it doesn't seem to show up on every print and it's relatively minor when it does but still it's worth noting Maybe the biggest problem with the printer is just that it's been so popular that you can't find them in stock anywhere, at least for the retail price of $500. As for whether I would recommend the printer, yes, I absolutely would. It depends a little bit on what you want to use it for, though. If you're primarily a wargamer and are just printing miniatures, you might very well be able to get by with a smaller printer and just running it more often. And if you're new to resin 3D printing, it might also not be a bad idea to go for one of the cheaper entry models just to see if it's something that you're actually interested in before you move on to something like this. But for me, I'm kind of all in on resin printing and being able to print larger models like you can on the Saturn is a huge draw for me. So this is kind of the workhorse in my uh, resin printing arsenal. If you have any questions about the printer, feel free to ask in the comments below, or if you already have one, maybe let me know what your experiences have been with it. I've got several projects that are in the planning stages that are going to be using the Saturn fairly heavily, so look forward to that, and uh, if you're interested in seeing more of what I do on the channel, feel free to subscribe. This video was brought to you with the support of my patrons on Patreon, including these Palace VIPs and Angelica Brady. Thank you very much for your support. If you'd like to know how you could join me on Patreon and help support the channel for as little as a dollar a month, check out the link in the video description. Thanks for watching!